So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tokyo Stream Wrestling. Today we are looking to get close as we can to fully loaded. We recently had the King of the Ring paint review, and on that night we had a 95 rated show. It had featured a lot of matches, obviously with the King of the Ring, so we'll run through it pretty quickly. You know, so we, uh, we opened things up with Triple H beating Owen Hart, The Rock defeated X-Pac, uh, those are the King of the Ring matchups. New Age Outlaws, uh, they retained the World Tag Team titles against the Legion of Doom in a no disqualification match. Mankind defeated Jeff Jarrett in the King of the Ring. Undertaker defeated Ken Shamrock, which a match that didn't really go down that well in the King of the Ring. That was a, I think they had bad chemistry, that really sucked. Mankind and Triple H just had a 79, not as good as you would have hoped. Mark Henry squash, uh, squashed uh, Terry Funk on the way out whilst he was about to leave the company. Undertaker defeated The Rock for 79, again, pretty low. Uh, we started to pick things up at the end, though, when Kane defeated Steve Austin in a last man standing match to win the World Championship. And he won because Mike Tyson cost him the match. So it was being revealed that McMahon and Tyson had been working together all along, and they celebrated. So obviously that's going to be a big uh, factor coming into the next couple of months. Undertaker defeated Mankind to win the King of the Ring in a 99 rated match, so that really saved the pay-per-view. And Mankind was breaking down, freaking out that he lost. Because Mankind, for the last number of months, was basically begging the Undertaker, please give me a match, let's face each other, let's please do it. And he finally got the match, and he lost. So, not good news for Mankind in that regard. Now, storyline-wise, so we've got a couple of new storylines. For the most part, we are going to probably do some rematches and things like that. Um, so Daniels and Gennetti, we never got a real chance to do that one. Same with the lightweight championship match. We never got a chance to really do that. Um, Mankind and Taker, pretty obvious. Let's do a rematch for the next pay-per-view. We could even do the Hell in a Cell, classic Hell in a Cell match if you wanted to. Um, Kane and, and Austin, obviously that will be a rematch as well. Um, the Nation of Domination, we've still got something we could possibly do with that. I think uh, we maybe, maybe we have turned Karma face, or we are going to, so at least we'll do a match there. Uh, we're going to put The Rock in Triple H, we're going to start setting that one up. So obviously that was a match planned for SummerSlam, but I feel like we could probably do it at Fully Loaded, have the triple, have Triple H win in a screwy finish, and then get a gimmick match between the two. Like we, like I think in real life they did a ladder match. I think that'd be, something like that would be pretty cool for SummerSlam, just to beef it up a little bit more, and maybe The Rock gets the title win at SummerSlam. Um, the Triple Threat Tag Team titles, Look, I wanted to do straight up uh, Billy Gunn and Road Dog versus Vader and Chains, but uh, I want to save that for SummerSlam. So I'm going to add in uh, the Legion of Doom just to make it a triple threat match. Let them take the pin, and that can uh, just get us through another month until we get to um, SummerSlam. And the Women's Championship, we're going to finally start putting it in stone. It's new women invade the WWF when the news breaks that the women's title will be returning, which women will reign supreme. So we're going to have. Uh, basically a bit of a, a women of the WWF, not that there's a lot of them now, um, take on some of the outside uh, Japanese girls that's come in and are now invading. So a bit of one of those storylines. Not sure how we're going to decide who's the champion. I think we'll decide the, the first champion at SummerSlam. Um, I was thinking maybe a tournament, but we just did a tournament, so uh, we'll have to try and come up with something there instead. But um, one of the ideas I've got for that is um, we're having maybe Sable and Sunny or you know some of the you know, Terry Reynolds some of those girls competing in like a uh, a gown match what is a ball ballroom gown match a gown or whatever or bra and panties whatever the hell one of those dumb matchups and then they competing they're competing in that and then all these Japanese girls swarm the ring and just beat the crap out of them and kind of say oh holy shit things have just changed. The real deal is now here in the women's division. So that's one of the ideas I've got for that one. So we probably will execute that one in today's uh, show coming up. So uh, that's where we stand right now. Uh, we're in week one of July. Fully loaded four weeks away. SummerSlam eight weeks away. And then, uh, yeah, so we are definitely on the road to SummerSlam right now. We've got a big pay-per-view coming up. Hopefully we can uh, have another back-to-back -back good show because we've been having a bit of luck with our pay-per-views at the moment. We're getting one good match out of there that's really saving our pay-per-views. So I'm hoping that we can uh, keep that momentum going uh, into the next few. All right, so let's uh, start booking. This is Raw is War. Let's take a look at the results. Pre-show match featuring Mariko Yoshida taking on Luna Vachon. Um, she debuted and it got her a below average rating, but they have great chemistry. Okay, so there's a potential fuse straight off the bat for our women's division. 
Luna 49, Mariko 26. Luna was pretty good for our women's standards. 44 rated match. Over the show with Vince McMahon, Mike Tyson, Kane, Paul Bearer, laughing, talking about how, oh my God, we got Austin great. We beat him. We got him. Blah, 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 blah. Austin comes out. He says, I've got a rematch for Fully Loaded. And you know what? I'm going to kick your ass. You know the rest. So, uh, Hunter Ray there to start things off. Aguilar took on Brian Pillman for the lightweight championship. Pillman was able to successfully defend it. 52 from Pillman, 40 from Aguilar, 54 rated. Afterwards, Pillman did challenge uh, Takamichi Noku to a match for the title. Obviously, Takamichi Noku has been hunting it for a while. Pillman says, let's just get it over and done with. Chains of Vader took on Kind Tai for 62. Vader 82, Chains 56, Kind Tai in the low 40s. Not a bad match. And that kind of uh, kicks off our Triple Threat Tag Team Championship situation. We were hoping to have um, Chains and Vader be pretty competitive, I'd say, for uh, those championships. And I don't know if we'd have a win, but you know, certainly got to consider it. Um, following up, we had Mankind cutting a promo on The Undertaker. Mankind, 95 rated for that promo there. And then we had Vince McMahon announcing that the women's division is returning. He talked to some of the women of the WWF, Sable, China, Terry, Luna, uh, Sunny, Kimona, and said, hey, the women's title's coming back. If you're interested in challenging for it, well, we're going to crown the first winner at SummerSlam. The Godfather defeated Salvio Vega for 59, Godfather 55, Salvio 47. So this is really our first chance to take a look at the Godfather as a babyface, and he did pretty well. 55, can't complain. Afterwards, Farouk was just disgusted that the Godfather would do that. Um, and look, yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised. I think we need to change Henry's gimmick. Okay, switch it to great, that's good. So yeah, Farouk was disgusted that uh, the Godfather's now turned into this pimp, he's doing this, and uh, yeah, so the whole nation of domination just were, you know, not happy at all with Farouk, basically embarrassing them and kind of upsetting the nation of domination name. Kind of almost indicating that the split between the Godfather and the nation. Maybe we'll do a match. Um, Main event was The Rock and Jeff Jarrett one on one. The winner gets an, opp gets an opportunity at the Intercontinental Championship. Triple H and commentary. The Rock 78. Jarrett a little low, 68. I think Jeff would normally do better than that. But hey, 81 rated match. Good stuff. And that uh, will set up for a championship match down the line. Gives us an 85 rated show. WCW are offering Ahmed Johnson a three year deal 13,900, 20% bonus per event. We're offering him a one-year deal for seventeen thousand. Um, look, we'll see how he goes on a two-year deal. Ooh, playing hard to get. Uh, look, do we really want Ahmed Johnson for three years? I don't. I mean, we don't want to really lose anybody, do we? We don't really want to lose anyone. But uh, you know, look, Ahmed Johnson has been okay. Actually, he's been a little bit better than what we've really been giving him credit for. Actually, I think. Um, I think we've kind of really underrated him and not really done a lot with him, but um, you know he's been performing in the mid 60s, high 60s at times. He's done okay. He's done okay. Uh, Ray Trailer, Big Boss Man. They're trying to offer uh, him a deal. Look, I'm not that interested in Big Boss Man. Four year deal. I'm not interested. You know, Big Boss Man. Yeah, he's got a bit of pop, but his ring stats are dreadful. And um, a friend of mine, Bailey 14. He's been booking WCW uh, in the exact same time period, and he told me that Big Boss Man is one of the worst he's got in the roster. He told me that he, he's just dreadful. So, I don't know. I don't know if we uh, if we really need the Big Boss Man. Don't know. Not for the money that they, that we they really want us to uh, pay for him. So, yeah, look, 14, four year deal, fourteen thousand. I think you can have him, WCW. I think you can have him. One guy I would like to get, though, is Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase, H.E. Mike Seals, 76 charisma, 86 acting. I mean, Ted DiBiase, doesn't he just scream, you know, um, the corporation? Just, he would be perfect for the group. I just wanted to see if his mic skills were declining at all 
uh, but it doesn't seem to be the case. It's gone up and down a little bit there, but that's fine. Back to where it was. So I'm not concerned at all. Um, I would like to keep, I'd like to get Ted to be RC and have him be um, a key figure in our corporation. So there's no, nothing for me that would really turn me off getting him. No money, no amount of time. I'm happy to sign him a four or five year deal because Ted will offer plenty. Um, the only thing might be is I might like to see him do whatever is needed and I only have to take out house shows so that will give me the option if I want him to to get back in the ring do a bit of a, a J-O-B for somebody and um, yeah so that will give me that option there which would be amazing because uh, he's got 6-6 six, six pop and um, you know, if he's in the corporation he's going to have to get a bit physical I think he might be the, one of the new stooges but uh, yeah ECW trying to uh, compete with me for Al Snow. Uh, he's considering both offers, actually. Um, so we'll give Al a bit more of a bump up in his deal and make sure we sweeten it. We'll seal the deal there. All right, so let's take a look at the ratings results. We got a 28.71 television rating. Pretty good. Nitro, 23.48. So the gap is really starting to increase. Really starting to increase. They had an 81 rated show, the Steiners defeating the Outsiders for the tag titles. So new tag team champions there actually, the Steiners winning. Um, Scott Hall's the world champion, not going to bother him too much, but Kevin Nash maybe. Um, the Steiners, high 60s, what about Scotty Steiner, 68. I'd like to see them get a bit more pop. But yeah, so that's kind of where they're at. So they're certainly starting to decline and really, you know, even our attendances are starting to get to the same level. So. WCW, not really much of a competition for us at the moment, which is a little bit disappointing. I would like to see them be a bit more competitive for longer. But um, hey, if they can keep stealing our talent like Ahmed Johnson, you never know. So what I might do now is I might go and take a look at my uh, TV deal. I think we will cancel. I'd like to get a, a deal happening for Shotgun, uh, sorry, for Sunday Night Heat. Um, so I'd like to sign a deal with that. Get rid of Shotgun Saturday Night. We don't you know, it's not a great name. It's never been a great show. So I'd like to um, get that happening. So what we can do is we might be able to land ourselves an ESPN deal by the looks of it. Um, or we could maybe go USA Network. So let's cancel this other one. So I don't, I'd, I'd like to wait the four months out, but I don't want to book two minor shows. And that's just ridiculous. So we'll cancel it. So we're gonna pay the 750. That's fine. We're gonna pay him basically a million dollars to uh, cancel, and that's that's fine. Who cares? What's a million dollars to us right now? Not a lot. We'll make it back at the end of the month. So this is Sunday Night Heat, the first ever one. Let's take a look at the results. I open things up with Vince McMahon announcing that Owen Hart will get a title opportunity against Kane tonight. 100 rated, great way to start off heat. Mankind took on Billy Gunn one on one. Mankind 92, Billy Gunn 66. Nice for Mankind, very, very nice. 92, incredible. Mankind followed up by challenging The Undertaker to a match. So Taker and Mankind looks to be set in stone for the future. Goldust and Mark Mera had a 70 rated matchup. Number six defense for Goldust for the European Championship. So the title was on the line. Goldust 69. Very, very good. Mark Marrow. Yeah. He was okay. 52. The Godfather. He was seen backstage getting beaten up badly by the Nation of Domination. 78 rated angle. So the Godfather switched this new character. Isn't working out so well so far. It's not working out uh, so good so far. So I'm trying to say for him as the nation do beat him up probably setting up for a match i'd say at the pay-per-view main event was owen hart and kane who don't seem to click kane 75 owen hart 78 Oof. okay we still got an 84 rated match but um yeah no chemistry so that rules out a few between them down the line doesn't it um okay so yeah, still had a high-rated match despite the fact that it didn't click. That was because of the fact that uh, Austin Kane's storyline heat is in the high 90s. I think it might be 99 even. It's very, very... It might be, yeah, at least 95. Very, very high. 
so yeah um, it did lose a bit of heat though because of that but hey it gives us an 85 rated Sunday night heat the first seven one 85 that's really good really really good all right so we had heat our ratings was a 2.43 Clearly, a hell of a lot better than what we were doing on the shotgun Sunday night. Reason being is we actually got uh, some proper um, networks behind it. But that will help us a lot just to gain that little bit extra money on the side as well. 2.43 is really nice. 3,000 attendance is pretty solid too. Alright, we've got a contract. Let's hope, let's pray that it is Ted DiBiase. Yes, Ted DiBiase is coming to the WWF oh that's awesome that's that's really great raw is war take a look at the results open things up with mankind and taker so mankind hit the ring as the undertaker was talking about winning the king of the ring taker was talking about how he's going to challenge Austin at SummerSlam mankind hit the ring and just came after the undertaker surprising the undertaker caught him off guard mankind basically got the better of the undertaker there kind of showing that hey I can step up to the dead man and I can you know I can go toe to toe. Val Venus, quick victory over Terry Funk. Did what it had to do there. Uh, hopefully, it gives Venus just a little bit more popularity as Terry Funk leaves the company. The Rock promo on Triple H, 82, pretty good. Steve Blackman and Ahmed Johnson, 65. Ahmed, 69. Ooh, are we making a mistake letting him go? He's, he's, he's pretty good. Five-year deal though for twenty thousand dollars. I just don't think he's. I don't know if he's worth that. I don't know if he's worth that. Steve Blackman, fifty-seven. So Blackman's got fifty-two pops. So that's five above his pops. So that's that's pretty good. Triple H, eighty-five for his promo. Learned a new catchphrase. That's good. McMahon's uh, segment with uh, Kane and Tyson out there, 91, kind of hyping up the fact that Austin will never be champion again and how Vince McMahon's got a big change. He's promising a big change in the future. Our women's match, 47. Hey, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, this match did its job to give the crowd a breather. Okay. Uh, Bull Nakano, very good for her gimmick. Arja Kong got great for her gimmick. Ivory, 64. Sable, 41. Kimona, 31. Terry, 24. You know what? That was not the worst match in the world. I, I, I honestly cannot believe it, but that was not the drizzling shits. Afterwards, though, the women beating down the WDF girls worked out pretty well for 59, so that'll be a strong debut, I would say, for our Japanese girls coming in. So that's, uh, that's a good start. Very, very good start. 59 um, so we'll see how that uh, impacts their popularity hopefully it'll get them on underway Bradshaw and Mike Awesome had a 52 Bradshaw 58 Awesome 33 uh, Awesome just doesn't have the popularity but um, actually didn't we sign Mike Awesome to an actual deal or was he an ECW deal I don't even know um, so yeah that would have helped their style of matchup here I, I thought we had also on loan. I think we actually do have him on the contract. Uh, the Rock and Shamrock don't work well as a team for our main event. That hurt it. X Park 70. That's pretty good. Rock 72. Shamrock 81. Triple H 89. So the bad chemistry let us down a little bit there, unfortunately. But we gave the Rock a win over Triple H technically by, P by pinning X Park. So that'll give the Rock a bit of momentum. And still gives us an 82 rated show in the end. Hmm. Edge and Christian. Do we call them up? Edge wants the call up. Christian probably could just develop those last few skills whilst on the main roster. Do we give him the call? You know what we could do? Is you could call him up and you could send him to ECW for a little bit. Let him have some matches there just to kind of, you know, see where they're at against some other talent. Because with they're not quite in the plans yet. We haven't even really worked on the Hardy Boys yet. Um, but we could send them there for a little bit so they can get some matches under their belt whilst we're not really doing a lot with them. They could come in as goths, or do we bring them in as the brood? Christian's already got a gimmick. Do we bring them in as the brood, or do we go elsewhere? 
bring in the Brood, we've obviously got to bring in Gangrel. And I was always adamant on having Edge and Christian together as a group. So you could bring in Gangrel just to be the manager. Put him in the Ministry of Darkness. I was not a fan of them being in the Ministry of Darkness, but it would work. It would definitely, it, it made sense, it works. They could feed off Taker and Kane and those other guys for a while. I think it would probably help their career out and have them get uh, a bit of a rub off the uh, the angles that they have. So I think it's not a bad idea. Sun and our heat, let's take a look at the results. The Rock and Triple H. Went at it one, back and forth on the mic in the middle of the ring for 99. I had a feeling that they would produce some magic, and they sure did. 99 rated. Very, very good. Uh, Rick Rude, China, and X-Puck out there. Obviously part of DX to support Triple H. Mark Henry squished Ahmed Johnson. Not a great match, but, you know, it was a, it was a squash. Burial, really. 46 rated. Paul Heyman came out introducing the Dudleys and Mike Awesome as his new clients. And hopefully this will prove his gimmick. Awful again. Awful again. So Mike Awesome just having no luck with the gimmicks. That one probably because it was too soon. Whereas the other one probably just was a bad gimmick. 57 though, so that will get them a bit of popularity. Get them on TV, help them out. Yeah, the Dudleys aren't realistically the team where we're going to have long term. But down the line, we're going to steal them. We're going to sign them. We'll take them from ECW for sure. But uh, for now, you know, they'd be handy to bring in as a, as a team every now and then for us to use. Especially as the Hardys. RJ Kong beat up Terry Reynolds in a couple of minutes. RJ Kong 37. Not bad. Terry 28. So 34. Uh, New Age Outlaws promo on Chains Invaders, 68, not bad, starting up that feud. Marty Gennady beat Miguel, 55, Gennady, 56, Miguel, 43, not bad. And Daniels attacked Gennady afterwards as well, 48. And the main event was Triple H and Steve Blackman for 79. Triple H, 89, Steve Blackman, 60. Blackman was good, 60 rated, that's that's nice. Um, that's obviously coming off the, bat, off the fact that... Uh, uh, he did beat Ahmed Johnson and got a bit of popularity, so that's helped him out quite a little bit there. So, 89 rated for Triple H. Excellent. Gives us a 79 rated match. Should be a good show in the end. Not enough attractive women. Ooh. Okay. Well, we had a 74 rated show. I felt like the attractive women thing wouldn't really matter for the minor shows, but I'm guessing I am wrong. Very wrong. Alrighty. So, we had um, a 2.37 TV rating. What was that last week? How did we go? Did we improve it? No, we went down in ratings from last week. Well, we did have a much worse show. Last week, we did have the, the world champ on there. So that's a, that's a big difference. 